Hello guys, this is uh, Fred. Uh, I'm the developer of AirlineFS and what I want to give you here is a quick introduction to the software. There has been a lot of reviews and videos already um, fro for AirlineFS with the helicopters. Here I want to give you some technical insight on how it works and uh, what you can do with it so to improve your experience. So I just uploaded on FlightSimTO the 1.2 version beta. As I say, it's a beta, so don't expect it to be ready, but it's already quite advanced. Uh, all of the effects are there, and we're gonna do several improvements, but I would say uh, we are getting there. Uh, so I downloaded here and unzipped in my download folder. This is the beta 1.2, and you ha you'll have this folder. So I'll show you the best way to install it. I have here my community folder, and uh, with this release, AirlineFS can read uh, profiles from the aircraft that are in your community folder. So my suggestion is to actually copy this in here, okay, in the AirlineFS folder, and uh, from there launch it. Let me just show you a little bit and close here uh, my uh, thing. Okay, this is the directory with AirlineFS. This is the executable. Uh, that will actually launch the problem uh, program and there is a manual there. Uh, the manual uh, will give you a lot of information. Uh, it's a 28 pages manual on how it works. I will not, not go through it, but it will give you a lot of insights and even on how you can create your own profiles for the helicopters. Um, this library has been used extensively it used to be called HTR helicopter total realism and it's been used by training centers uh, even military forces and such now I brought it to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 uh, which was not easy but it really works well and in addition to that uh, I have a rotosim pilot John which is a pilot I'm also a student pilot he's a professional pilot so we really exchange a lot uh, of experiences and and uh, tweak the uh, Robinson 44 model in order to give you the best experience. Um, each uh, there are a number of parameters that you can se set up in airline FS. I'm going to show you that in a second. So the fly experience really depends on how you set up those parameters. How good is the developers? Uh, in the developer in doing that. I'm providing even you know a helicopter configuration sheet. If you want, you can follow that uh, in order to create your own helicopters. If you're not into creating new helicopters, just maybe read a little bit of the manual so you understand better. So the NLFS is uh, an executable external from Microsoft Flight Simulator. The reason we are doing that is because developing AirlineFS within Microsoft Flight Simulator, given the current mm, limitation of SimConnect is kind of comp complex. We might do it in the future, maybe for payware models, but at the moment this is the way it is. It's a very small executable. It doesn't o occupy any memory. So when you launch it, it will start doing something. First thing you have to notice is this airline config file. The airline config file, I have it here in my separate windows and let me just drag it here, is your uh, configuration. Uh, you don't really have to touch it it's gonna save your settings here for each game session so it at when you change for example the realism is gonna be saved there and uh, let me just to show in a file mm. okay I, I can find it anyways it's just a config file uh, it's here. Oh, language. I'm in a file. Sorry. Oh, here we go. So it's easier to read. Um, ignore the debug level. MSF co community path. In case you don't install in the community path, which I did here, um, it it's, uh, you should put your community path here. If you want M RNFS, uh maybe in a different uh, directory, you can do it. Uh, what? Uh, as soon as I launch RNFS, you see it's empty. Now, what happened, I if, I, if I look at the file, it has updated. It's okay, somebody updated it, yes. And it saved the uh, uh, MSF community. This is just the first time. Once it's saved, it's, uh, it's cool. I mean, you can actually move it in another directory. Uh, 
as soon as I and you have a number of settings here so this is the airline FS program uh, um, by default we set it on casual pilot so if you're more experienced in helicopters like in DCS and uh, um, I don't know explain just go forward and move it we just leave it this way because beginners really like it this way uh, if we move it forward you have a number of uh, uh, realistic things that happen so if I just moved it here and just like click here it's gonna say hey it's been modified and you see now I have my realism set to one which is 100 percent pedal sensitivity and cyclic sensitivity you don't need to touch them until you want you have external uh, controls either you know very high quality controls such as the Puma and such and you want to have a more touchy feeling uh, on the cyclic you're gonna increase that if you want to have a more smooth feeling on the cyclic sensitivity move it the other way around okay um, springs pedals relax and cyclics relax are basically automatic trims when you fly helicopters sometimes you you need to fly for a long time uh, going forward those will be reset at zero whenever you land and uh, uh <coughs> well uh, those will help you have especially if you have a spring joystick have the joystick go back to uh, zero in case you you want to um, i mean you want to use them uh, i sometimes i use them if i have longer flights otherwise not um, you see it has already found a flight model in uh, the community folders uh, in this case under the profiles robinson 44. so the way it works is it will look into the profiles folder okay and I have it here the profile has to be named airland FS underscore R44 and this is a change from the previous version and the reason for that is that if I for example uh, load a different helicopter in Microsoft Flight Simulator I'm here and he I have my helicopter which is already set there but if I change my helicopter and maybe go to another helicopter and go into others and I select for example the Sikorsky X60 uh, which also supports airline FS and so and I go back okay and then I set fly it will say profile loaded which means it has loaded the profile for uh, obviously those are messages that are still left for this is a beta helicopter so they're talking about the different helicopter there uh, but uh, it will have loaded the profile so if i look back at airland fs you see that now it has loaded the airland fs mh60 config okay um, so uh, this is how you change the profiles in this case uh, i'm gonna go back to the uh, robinson 44 because i think it's the one where we really studied the flight dynamics more and uh, this is what i'm gonna do so let me go back here and go back to uh, uh, main menu continue and change my aircraft so let me go I'll do it from here go back to my Robinson 44 it's in others okay okay flight conditions let me put whatever daytime here okay cool and close that and select the this airport here or we could say well, we can select whatever the I, oh this parking here i like it there set as departure the beauty about helicopters uh, is we can make them fly where we want you see it's loaded the new profile so this is a small message window that sits there uh, it's a windows application so it doesn't write in microsoft flight simulator yet we are planning to have okay I'm flying in the air interesting uh, <laughs> let me I mean I don't yeah, yeah we could do it like there from there let's see what happens okay uh, now okay yeah obviously I don't have my collective is not very happy let me just try and land somewhere and uh, interesting let me just land anywhere Where did I go? Where am I? I have no idea. Okay, let me pause the helicopter, stop and slowly go down. 
to the ground. Okay. Obviously, a, a damage may undercarriage. So, uh, back to Ireland FS. I'm now on the ground. What you see here is the velocity. So, if you look at an helicopter profile, it will have a, a lot of uh, numbers. Let's open this one so that I can show you better. Here, uh, the developer will set all the parameters for um, the helicopter, like the size, the rotor size, the there, are, there are a few hundred parameters uh, that are described in the document. So this is what will describe the flight model, and it can change a lot based on how the developer did it. What I do in, in the software is I calculate uh, for example, for the helicopter stabilizers, the vertical stabilizers, the horizontal stabilizers, the gravity, and uh, the drag, and the rotors, which is the rotor dynamics is a big part of uh, Airland FS. So uh, I calculate all that in real time, and this is uh, where it makes it an, a very flexible product for uh, creating helicopters. So what I can do as well in here is in the window, uh, I can say, okay, windows always on top, which is useful, especially if you want to see numbers like I want, or, and as well, you know, disable the messages. I, in this case, I leave them here on. Uh, I explain the other control. You see it, it's lo it loaded the thing. So I'm just gonna move it here and go into the numbers so you see what happens. So this is our uh, Robinson helicopter here. And uh, um, let me see the settings. Okay, I'm in professional pilot settings. I'm going to move them back to casual pilot. And you will see how, I hope you can see how it will change the behavior. So I'm here, and now I'm lifting the collective. I'm using a Thrustmaster 16000. It's very standard joystick with no pedals and everything. So this will give you, and I'm going to just lift my collective here. And please check those numbers that you see here the 25 percent this is uh how you see your your control settings some people say they go up to 50 percent i'm on all i'm gonna show you in a second my uh control setting in microsoft flight simulator they are all standard so i'm moving the collective all the way the cyclic all the way to the left you go it goes to minus 100 to 100 here where the mouse is and then if i move forward and back it's there if I move my pedals, they go to minus 100 to 100, and there is just this control here. And the collective, we saw it, it goes here all the way to 100. I won't do it, otherwise I, I mm, take off. The twist grip is actually the control from, in this case, it shows the, t the, the governor doing the twist grip automatically. Helicopters have this mm, mm, part that is called a governor that actually will uh, increase or decrease um, your pa engine power automatically and uh, this is what it does you can also disable governor but this will be for a future video but it's supported from this version on so let's just take off and see what happens okay i'm at my at easy settings uh, here uh, casual pilot easy settings let me move it here and see what happens so the numbers, I like to see the numbers anyway. Now, uh, well, this is the door of uh, the helicopter al always opening. So you see the helicopter is very stable and it you have no torque effect, no nothing. It just stays there uh, in a very, very stable way and it's kind of easy to fly. Uh, in fact, the way I'm doing this is I'm disabling all the torques when you're at zero difficulty and also make it a little making it a little bit more stable this is why some people think it's uh, sometimes they say oh this is you know it feels heavy and this is because you're on easy settings uh, many people enjoyed it this way especially in the latest version the 1.1 1 .1, we released something that was more for casual players and uh, and uh, and this is it so uh, we are uh, the way Airland FS works, it uh, calculates the physics forces and updates the angular and uh, the angular velocities in the in the um, flight simulator as well as the linear velocities. So it's a physical-based simulation model, and uh, it's based on it's very similar to what Explain does. Uh, so it should be relatively easy with this setting to hover, okay, because it will easily you know stop you 
uh, it will slow your speed so it's easier to to land okay and also some effects such as vortex ring state and such are not enabled now uh, if you're a more advanced pilot you might want you know to progressively go all the way to full professional pilot and uh, the helicopter will behave very very differently from now on L I like to have my simulation data here but I need more space because now we're gonna fly in a more <coughs> challenging way as I said I have I have about 30 hours of flying experience on the Robinson 44 myself so I kind of tuned it to my feelings we still have to fix some auto rotation and rotor RPM which are not perfect but this is what happens when I lift my collective okay you stare it's this is the, mm, the the main rotor torque you know have an influence on uh, on the asset on the on the helicopter since I'm not using the pedals it's spinning in fact we kind of slowed it down here it could spin faster but we didn't want really to make it so hard and uh, so in order to compensate for it I will have to use my pedals if you see I'm 50% pedals here and uh, I'm kind of descending I, I'm gonna leave it descend here because I'm below vortex ring state speed and I'll also take some velocity um, and, and so it's kind of harder to to keep it hovering this way it will tend to go everywhere and as you see here okay and I'm kind of landing but it goes back you know and it says rough landing so this is a more realistic type of flight uh, when you take off from with an helicopter what happens is that okay you start hover you position yourself and then you just start pulling the nose down a little bit uh, still keeping the pedals trying to be central um, on the runway which I'm not very good at even in real life and uh, as soon as it uh, reaches approximately 20 knots, you start having some translational lift. But you should uh, keep your nose a little bit down. It's very, because you, sh you sh would not want, in case you have an uh, engine failure, to be too high. So this is good. Now at about 60 knots, so I can let go. And uh, if you see, it starts going up uh, substantially. Okay, and this is the induced uh, velocity that impacts on the helicopter and allows you to uh, actually work in similar power settings. I should have, you know, taken a less mountainy area to show you that. But uh, uh, from here on, what happens if I let the pedals go, and now I'm 0% pedals, uh, well, it okay, there is a bug in my, in my VNE, or maybe it's because I'm uh, at an altitude, because uh, the VNE considers altitude as well. So maybe in this uh, density altitude, I should not fly much faster than 100 knots. Usually you have a placard on the top of the helicopter telling you the VNE. And if what happens if you go over the VNE? Well, you can uh, incur in what's called a, a rotor blade stall. I'm going to show that to you because it's kind of violent. So I ignore the VNE and keep on going. OK, and you get this effect of rotor blade stall. Otherwise, you can do, I mean, the, 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 the Robinson 44 is a, is a, is a quite uh, interesting helicopter to fly, okay? You can do all, all sort of maneuvers, but obviously, if I'm too high in the mountains, this is not as interesting as I wanted to do it. And you can do quick stops like I did here, and as well as other maneuvers. Um, I'm gonna just land here and maybe stop this video because I didn't want it to make it too long. I'll do some more advanced flying uh, videos uh, on uh, in another video. Just a quick intro to the thing. I hope you, okay, I just, you know, damaged my undercarriage. Cool, thank you very much and uh, mm, see you later, guys.